Thank you for listening to the Tatnus Podcast on the Tatnus Co. Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. A Mercedes kind of sentiment, luxury, and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. See my sons out burst into yin and yang, right? And that's me and you. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Tatnus Podcast. My guest tonight is none other than Just Chillin' Podcast host, Miguel. Love this dude. But before we get into that, we're gonna rate the uh, we're gonna review the pay per view, the Money in the Bank pay per view. But before we get into that, let me just hit you with a word from one of our sponsors. If you're like me and you love all things paranormal, your boy of Tatnus has got your hookup. Paranormality Radio is the only place you need to get your paranormal fix. Whether you have a favorite paranormal podcast or maybe you're looking for a new favorite, Paranormality Radio has a ton to choose from. If it fascinates you or scares you, Paranormality Radio has it, I assure you. So check them out, man. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and might even terrify yourself a little bit, but it's entertaining. All right, brother. Let's get into the fucking pay-per-view because this... I don't don't know how to feel about it. Like I, I said off air, I was fucking high as a kite and I was like, I feel like I'm entertained by this. But at the same time... I feel like, what the fuck did I just witness? Like, as a whole, the pay per view was just like, mm. I, I felt disappointed to be honest. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, man, first of all, I'm just happy to be on the Tatnus podcast, man. I just want you to know that. And I'm happy, you know, to be on here conversating with you for a little bit. Um, just happy to be here, man. Brother, it's an honor. I'm so fucking glad that you decided to like come on the show. You were such a pro when you had me on your show, and I was like, dude, this is so cool. I know, so. and I, I listen. I listened, you know, when we went back to work, and I started listening to um, to your recent podcast, and um, you said some nice stuff about me, man. I really appreciate that, man. And and I know it was true. I know, I know, you, I know you felt that way. So it's it's just it's From all the heart, brother. It's all good. But um, we getting into you know we're talking about um Money in the Bank pay pay per view uh WWE, so this is my bag, bro. Like, <laughs> I, can about, I can talk about this shit, man. It was crazy. So Money in the Bank um pay per view. <clears throat> um, why did you why did you why did you say that um you wasn't um entertained by it? Oh, I was totally entertained by it. It's just okay. like as a whole, I felt like. I, I don't know what the fuck's happening here. I mean, partially I was high as a kite, mm-hmm. but the last matches, I was like, the outcomes were nothing like I expected. Exactly. You are. Right. And I, right. I was like, what the? F- this fucking tubby bitch, <laughs> Otis. <laughs> Otis. Fucking yeah. wins by yeah. like the, the stupidest outcome. And you know what I was thinking? I was like, even – I don't – maybe they're doing that shit for a reason. Because I'm like, even when he got the money, I'm like, he's not going after the heavyweight title. He's got to be going after the U.S. title or the Intercontinental title. But, I mean, that's, that's right. what I'm, I still don't see him in the um, in the heavyweight picture, even though he's well, that, a heavyweight. <laughs> that's exactly how I feel, dude, where I feel like he's going to get fucked anyway when he tries to cash it in. He's going to be like – screwed by Ziggler and it's, yeah. it's like you didn't believe enough in Ziggler to give him a fucking title shot and then you're gonna fuck this guy over so then it's a slap in the face to Alistair and other cats that really could have utilized the push because look at Alistair I mean the guy was unbeaten for so long and yeah. I get it I get it when it's a multi-person match like that loss doesn't really take anything away from him it's not one on one, but still, you know. Man, um, I saw that match on SmackDown. Um, the qualifying match with uh, Otis and Ziggler. Um, man, I was pulling for Zig so bad, man. I, just, I thought he was. I thought he was gonna be in the in the ladder match. So I knew something was fucking up when he lost that match. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs up, man. Long overdue, and he fucking doesn't get the the rub. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're right. Uh, man, I want to get to my hot take, man. Um, did you see the tag match? Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking sick of it. They won. They won that uh that four-way match. Um, 
I like I, I like what the Forgotten Sons had done. I feel like they could have used a push there, or at least been a big part of the match. Man, it's just I'm tired of them just just going back and forth. Usos New Day, Us- Usos New Day with with those fucking belts, man. I'm just sick of it, man. I have to agree. I mean, I love both teams, of course, but at the same time, to me, tra- tradition wise, when you bring in a new team in, they should come in with a win. You know what I'm saying? You don't bury them off the fucking word go, because then who who's supposed to believe in them? Especially on a pay per view. Yeah, I mean, like that that that's the biggest win. That's most important to their career. Now, if you if you just like going to squash them, you might as well just not even have them in the. It should have just been a fucking triple threat, I guess. And not a exactly. Threat. But this is the NXT like ritual with Vince, right? Bring them in, bury them immediately you know what i mean because he didn't create them hunter did so bury them off and the I like fucking I, I actually like them i i think they have all the fucking potential in the world mm-hmm. but you bury them like right away it doesn't make people want to get behind them yeah yeah man i don't, I don't know man like i said this is uh I, I was hot, man, thinking about that. I'm like, fuck. Man. <laughs> fuck. I, like, I felt that like, way fuck. about the Oscar win. I was yeah. like, what the fuck? I was like, um, what the fucking New Day, man? I'm just sick of that gimmick, man. I mean, how long has that gimmick been going, man? Like, they need to do something with those guys, man. Like, It's a I Cena. Like I feel like it's a Cena situation where as long as it sells the merch that it sells, they're never going to disband it. Once it stops selling the merch that it sells, then they'll fucking like repackage them. But that's why Cena never had the heel turn because his merch was selling way too fucking much and yeah. they didn't want to lose the money. So they're yeah. like, nope, we're going to keep running this till the wheels fall off and fucking people stop caring. Man, I got fucking four nephews and all of them fucking love John Cena. They don't, they're like fucking five and under. <laughs> <laughs> so you see what i'm saying right it's endless fucking money yeah what, what do you think about him being compared to hogan do you think that he's is there any connection there at all man that's a good question i think uh merch wise it might be a fair comparison but work wise Oh, fuck. It might be a fair comparison. <laughs> Neither one of them have fucking all that elaborate of a move set. And they still put asses in seats. So I, I think that's fair, perhaps. You know, the only thing I think that separates them is the fact that, um, and I think it pushes Hogan over, is that um, how uh, fucking transparent he was in pop culture. Like, Absolutely. Like 100%. in movies, TV shows, yes. like. Yeah, yes. he had his own TV show. People were interested in yeah. watching his TV. I think he Cena was, aspires to that, but I think you're a hundred percent correct. Yeah, that that's that's where you know uh Hogan leaves him, you know, right there on that race. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, Hogan is Hogan. Like you're never gonna fucking there's still not a name bigger. You know what I'm saying? Because he kind of laid the groundwork for all these motherfuckers, you know. So yeah, Hogan is Hogan. There's there's still no replacing Hogan. Hmm. Um, I enjoyed the uh the Seth Rollins versus versus uh McIntyre match. What you think about that? That was fucking great. Mm-hmm. I was I I went into that pissed off out the gate because I was like, if they have McIntyre lose to this motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna be pissed. So I was like. Don't do it, Vince, you fucking delusional fuck. Um, but it turned out the way it should. Man, that finish was so sick, man. I like the way they finished it. Where Seth super kicked him and fucking Mac- Drew McIntyre came right back with the Claymore. And that shit was tight. Beautiful. Beautiful. I was like, that is solid. You don't see that anymore. Those kind mm-hmm. of finishes at all. What, what, and, and they're like... um to me, I feel like they're they're pumping up that Claymore move. Like people Love are it. not supposed when he hits you with that shit, you're not supposed to kick out. Right. Look at the fucking DDT. I mean, come on. When Jake Roberts had that shit, that was a fucking 
you know, finish that you could not kick out of. And then it became somewhere down the line, everybody uses it as kind of like just a move <laughs> in the move set. And it's like, that takes away from it so much. Yeah. Like, it really fucked it up. And then I've been watching um, uh, Drew McIntyre wrestle. I've seen him wrestle on Raw, and I think I've seen um, he um, he kick out of a uh, uh, fucking uh, something Self did to him at, uh, at the pay-per-view. Like, he's kicking out on ones and shit. Like, they yeah. trying to, like, try to brock his ass. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, I think they're going to, like, boost him fucking hard. I think they're going to just jack him up. And make him the best fucking thing since sliced bread, honestly. <laughs> um, deservedly so. Hmm. But I, I have mixed feelings about this Jinder Mahal like face turn. I think it's a fraud. I think he's going to use it to get close to uh, McIntyre and then turn on him, personally, and go back heel. I think, personally. Hmm. Yeah, he was a good heel, yeah. Right. Better- it, I can't imagine him face. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the uh, Bray and Braun Strowman match? Damn, I I I I kind of felt like I knew the outcome. Yeah, you can kind of tell this story. A little yeah, bit. but I loved it. I think it was it was brilliant. I don't know how it's gonna end though. Uh, what do you, which way you think it's going? I I, I assumed Braun would win because. If you were to take it off him right away, he looks weak. And Bray doesn't need the rub. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I love what Bray did with it. Was kind of like, I tried to reason with you. Now he has to step in. I, <laughs> I, I begged him to let me handle this. And I'm trying to reason with you. But now he's involved. And now it's that other gimmick. Like, you brought this on yourself. I tried to do things the reasonable way. And I was like, oh, that's depth. That's that's dope. That's fucking really heavy. Because this is going to, I think SummerSlam maybe might be yeah. the next uh, encounter. Mm-hmm. I think that'll be cool. Yeah, so you think they're going to um, tell that story for a little while longer? I, 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 I would hope, it. yeah. I like. I mean, it's not a backlash match. Honestly, that that's a garbage pay per view. <laughs> I think it's just a wasted opportunity. Yeah, but but what but what is what happens? Like, okay, so we can play out both scenarios. Like, if the Fiend beats Braun Strowman, it still makes Braun Strowman lose a week. Look weak, right? I think they're gonna squeeze as many championship fucking defenses in in that time frame in as much as they can. Honestly, and then I think he's gonna rejoin. To be honest. Oh yeah, to get you had to get up. At least temporarily. Right. Yeah, I think so. I think he's gonna kinda side with him temporarily at least. And uh I I I don't know about you, man, but um this whole potential like redeveloping the Wyatt family fucking shit has crossed my mind over the the course of time and I'm one of those people that I thought Liv Morgan is eventually going to join and I still stand by that I felt um, with certain things if you read enough into it and you dig deep enough and you look at some of the shit uh, obviously what I initially thought so it's a fucking window because I thought Rowan was going to rejoin. Um, I thought Miz was potential. Like, when you look at the puppets and you look at their behavior, I thought, hmm. You look at some of the things that were said when, you know, the fucking rabbit got eaten by that buzzard and... Mm-hmm. uh He said he tried to get me to conform to his, you know, ideology. That's Daniel Bryan all over it. Yeah. And I I thought, holy fuck, the rabbit might be Daniel Bryan eventually. (laughs) 
tried to get everyone to conform to his ideology of like recycle and this that and the fucking other and you guys are killing the planet and all this other nonsense and i was like holy shit maybe that's supposed to reflect daniel bryan yeah and very so good when it comes to that shit man right and then I, i i looked at the buzzard who ate him alive because he's trying to get me and i thought rowan turned on daniel bryan because he was trying to push his ideologies on him and rowan said no one controls me and he turned on him he attacked him and i thought holy fuck that's two pieces of the puzzle you know what i mean and and there's all but of, of course contractual things come up and that changes a lot of stories now mm-hmm. doesn't it where it's like okay maybe this was the original plan but now these guys want other contracts or you know all sorts of shit comes up and things change on the fly so i don't know how to follow it anymore i'm just like ah, it's all out the window <laughs> yeah how do you how do you land on um uh, live more you know being a part of uh whatever bray's got going on with his gimmick right now i think her confusion of who she is is something he would prey upon and try to give her a home that you know you know for lack of a better term give her an identity like when you're confused and you know who you're supposed to be it seems like that character would prey on that and say i can tell you who you're supposed to be let me give you your identity let me give you a home let me give you a family so then you'll never feel out of place again like you don't belong let me almost the cult leader type gimmick again you know what i'm saying Um, yeah and dude let me tell you i've been going back and watching some of those um some of those matches when um bray was the cult leader man and just the way that he's just whispering their ear and shit like amazing yeah it was good man it was it was really good i love it yes you know I mean, how Have fucking you, young was he to be, you know, fucking on that shit like then, like that? I, mean, he, I, I love it. I mean, I grew up with the shit from the 80s, and I grew up watching it. Um, I don't know if you've seen this or not, and I, it's probably way off topic, but uh, someone put together these dream matches on YouTube that were phenomenal as to, like, if you could see something happen. And they would splice together like promos from both parties and be like this is why it works and it would be shit like um bray wyatt versus raven and oh yeah the cult leader type mentality on both parties and i was like holy fuck that'd be cool that's compelling shit you know what i mean and uh big show versus andre and shit like that Mm-hmm. And I ain't seen, uh, you get to send me that link, man. I ain't seen that. Yeah, dude, I'll send it to you because, like, this dude did a great job. Like, he he spliced together all their promos that, like, Raven, like, he would make it so it's like Raven and Bray are arguing with each other with promos, but they're both coming across like cult leaders. You know what I mean? And yeah. oh, holy fuck, it's heavy. And it's like man i i want to see that now <laughs> but it'll never happen but it, it's just fucking you know it, it's pure junk food at this point <laughs> yeah. you know it does nothing for you but yeah. it's enjoyable <laughs> yeah well you're talking about dream matches I, I was talking a whole bunch about all uh, that hogan rock match um a couple of days ago i was listening to a podcast and they brought that match up again did you remember watching that match Oh, yes. I I will never forget where I was when I watched that for the first time. That was dope. Um, My first son was actually due to be born soon, and I watched it for the first time, and I was like, shit. Or he was born, actually, I think, at that point. Um, One or the other is really close. It's kind of neck and neck, and I was like, fuck. This is so good. Oh. Heavy, heavy. Yeah, that, it was you, in you Toronto. Talk about dream matches. That, that's, that was one of them. And it was in Toronto where it was literally like 30 minutes from where I was living. So I was like, shit, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> Never thought I'd see it, you know, because I followed the whole WCW 
WWE fucking like, you know, ratings yeah. war. Yeah. And and they they were saying that some fans was like uh pissed that they brought out um Hogan as um a WCW character character and not a um a WWE character that he was, you know, back in WWE he should have been um Hulkamania, yellow and red, but he came out as uh NWO and and they were up some fans the wrong way. Now that's that's what they were saying on the podcast. That's crazy. Yeah. Like I don't get that. Like, they said they wanted their hope back. You know, they, that's not their oh, hope. Oh man. They, they, I mean, eventually cause they got their because they, they own him. <laughs> yeah, I guess eventually got their wish anyway because he turned back to that fucking red and yellow. Yeah, eat your ve- eat, eat your vitamins and say your prayers. <laughs> <laughs> All that nonsense. <laughs> Take yeah. your steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Deny it profusely <laughs> on live TV, but shoot yeah. them up anyway. Yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, but they were they were saying that some people they, they didn't want to see that version of uh, him when it happened, but that's what happened. I mean, fucking Eric Bischoff was involved, so I mean, you know, I guess I, it happened. I joke with people, but I love Hogan. I do. Um, I grew up with Hogan. Um, yeah. I'm older than WrestleMania for fuck's sake. So I mean, that yeah. should tell people <laughs> how old I am. Yeah. Um, I'm 37. Man, I'm a little yeah. bit older than WrestleMania, but yeah. um, I love Hogan. I grew up with Hogan as a kid. I watched the the cartoon Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling and shit. Yeah. Uh, what 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 was that heel turn for you like then? Was it shocking for you? I was floored, but I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was the greatest fucking thing that could happen to the business because um the question came, what has never been done before? And obviously Hogan started his career as a heel, but no one remembers that because he was nobody then. He wasn't like fucking the Hogan we all know. He was getting his foot in the door. So I thought it was a brilliant move because no one's going to remember that and be like, ah, we've seen this. You know what I mean? I didn't even live at the time when Hogan was a heel, when he started his career before he worked for Vince. So I wouldn't remember it either. It's it's the old footage that I, I can go back to. But, oh, it's been done. But not my lifetime. So, I loved it. Yeah, um, yeah it seemed like they made heels cool or whatever when that happened. Yeah, I, I, I truly, uh, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was, like, refreshing, honestly. Uh, yeah. it, it definitely broke that fucking, you know, stereotypical, like, uh, predictability of the business you kind of if you watch wrestling enough you could say based on who gets offense off the most in the beginning you could say they're gonna win Hmm. because then they take a beating but then they have the comeback right and they they start to fucking whip ass again and then they win it's so predictable you can actually watch a match and be like based on the pattern this guy's gonna win this guy's gonna lose and then the Hogan turn and heel thing was like I don't I don't even know anything anymore. <laughs> like I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't see any of this coming. <laughs> so it just became so like reality based. I think it's the greatest thing that happened to the business mm. in ages. Well, I guess we can get to back to the Money in the Bank pay per view again because I had some more stuff. Uh, uh, what did you think about uh, Ray Mysterio and Aleister Black getting thrown off the top of the tower by uh, Baron? I was high as a fucking kite. And I was like, <laughs> Corbin just committed double homicide. Straight up. Yeah. But the <laughs> fact that they they you could hear the sound of them hitting a platform immediately, I was like, you guys fucked it. <laughs> like six feet my ass the second you <laughs> threw him over you hear splat and like there's a mat like a foot away <laughs> yeah you guys killed it you yeah. <laughs> um so so let's see 
we got the Boneyard match. We got the Firefly Funhouse match. Uh, we got this Money in the Bank uh, cinematic match. Uh, what do you think about these uh, cinematic matches as of late? Because I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing some more of these in the future. Man, personally, oh, my God, I, I welcome it. Um, when there's no crowd, I think it, it really kind of makes up for the lack of a crowd. Um, I didn't know what to think of it at first. I honestly thought I was going to hate it. But when I saw it, um, I mean, there's layers. There's there's definitely layers to uh, to kind of dissect here. And with the Taker match especially. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody on Twitter, I, I remember, asked, if that was honestly Taker's last match, would you be okay with it? And someone, before I could answer, someone hit the nail on the head and probably worded it better than I ever could and said, match quality-wise, yes. Otherwise, no. Because Taker deserves a crowd to be there to witness it. I have to agree with that. I think he's earned that. I think um, that's the reason why it's not going to be his last but the cinematic style, I think when you can't have a crowd that's live there, it really makes up for the silence that really takes you out of the matches otherwise. I, I, yeah. I just, I'm still trying to adapt and accept these like empty arena matches, and I'm like, I can't do it. It's there's you know, you hear too much, I think. Yeah, and, and let me tell you how much work they're putting into it because I think they had Daniel Bryan and um and uh fucking AJ Styles uh, fighting in uh, Vince's office and shit like that. That was fucking it, hysterical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed that a lot. And, and then they went back out in the in the hallway, and uh, yeah, there was <laughs> it was no music and they was just talking to each other. <laughs> And then it just paused again. <laughs> they started back fighting again, and then the music just hit like a movie again. And it was so <laughs> I love it. I think they know okay. what they're doing in that sense. I think they're taking the piss a little bit. Um, <laughs> when it comes to in the ring, I do have to give credit where it's due. Because with a lack of crowd, I have not yet heard anyone that you would consider like not as experienced call their their spots where when there is a crowd i've caught like hunter calling his spot with someone like you know taker or somebody and it's like you guys are better than this how the fuck did i hear that on a mic you just told them oh clothesline me and then you know what the fuck you're better than this in a crowdless fucking arena, I haven't caught an NXT person yet call their spots and be like, hey, hit me with this now or whatever. I'm sure they're obviously aware that there's no drowning out their voices with crowds because the crowd's not fucking there. But they just seem to know what they're doing. They don't seem to have to call their spots. I think that's an, that's an art form honestly that uh i think i think they were kind of uh maybe learning you know with you know under fire i suppose you know baptism by fire like you're under the gun and you don't have time to figure it out just don't fuck up and i think they've done a good job of that where it's just like okay let's get on the same page so we don't need to call our spots so the cameras never pick it up and I think they've done wonderful with that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. They they have, and I guess they they got the right people for it. Um, only thing I would say is uh, fucking get some. I don't fucking know, man. Get some better story <laughs> writers or some shit. It's like it's like I can pick a couple good stories that I like, and then the rest of it's just shit. Like I don't fucking know what they're doing with Z- Zelina and her homies. Like, I don't fucking understand what they're doing with fucking Bobby Lashley. Like, I'm sick of him, too. Can you just throw him away? I'm sick of Bobby Lashley. What the fuck is he doing taking up 20 minutes of my Monday? 
I'm sick. Get him out of here. <laughs> get him the fuck out of here. I don't give but... a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> fuck, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, fucking Cody Rose can do something better with Bobby Lashley than what they're fucking right. doing right now. And their big solution is put MV fucking P as his manager. Because that's going to be the answer to all his fucking problems. Name a championship MVP's one. <laughs> I'll wait. I, know, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like, it's like, okay. All right. I use, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to tune in for the pay-per-views and stuff like that. And, and um, as far as uh, Raw and SmackDown go, I don't even watch them live anymore. I just pre-record them. And then I go the next day and I watch. And whatever I don't like, I skim through it. <laughs> I feel you. Because there's shit that I'm just not interested in watching. Like, uh, God bless them, man. The fucking Street Profits, man. I mean, God bless them, dude. They, I feel like, what's that guy's name? The uh, skinny guy. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fucking uh, Montez. Montez. Yeah. Boy. Now, he is an athlete. He can work. You know, I feel like he can be a successful uh, singles competitor. I, I think whole, so. Yeah. This whole fucking gimmick with the tag. I mean, I guess I guess they're paying their dues, so I kind of let them slide. I'm not gonna be re- I'm not gonna be fake with you, man. Um, I guess they're just letting them. I guess they're just paying their dues. I guess they're new. You know, I guess it's some shit you got to do. But he can right. work. I mean, he fucking worked the match with Seth Rollins, and it was fucking believable to me. So I agree. Yeah, he. I mean, he's got a future, you know. So, like I said, he's charismatic really, as fuck. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't really make me as mad as uh like people that should know better, like Bobby Lashley and and fucking um like you said what they're doing with the New Day, but I guess like you said they're getting a John Cena treatment, so that makes sense. Yeah, right. To me. When that fizzles out, then it'll change. But yeah, until- but it's just. It's just so much stuff that I could point at that I don't like as as well as what I do like. Like when um I watch like the whole shit with um uh, Edge and uh, Randy Orton. I don't know what the fuck's going on with them two right now. And I'm they not end it wrong like that. I'm not into it. I'm not yeah. into it. Like yeah. that that pay per view match, that Mania match, way yeah. too long. And way I like both long. guys. I like. Both I love guys. them both. But it was a too fucking lengthy of a match that I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And it should be done. Mm-hmm. Personally, I think. It should yeah, be I'll, fucking yeah. Yeah, find, find some new dance partners. <laughs> right. Like I thought we, we, we fucking resolved this issue at Mania it, yeah. it, in a lengthy, overdrawn way. Yeah. And when Vince himself hated the match because it was too long, I got an idea. Let's make a second fucking pay per view match. Yeah, that shit's probably gonna fucking headline backlash too. Oh, it's terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> the, like, the, epi- the epitome of, of shit pay per view. <laughs> right, and I mean the pay per view sucks to begin with because. Yeah. Name a great backlash match that you can remember before, like the first two. And even yeah. then, the first two, I couldn't fucking name a great match, but I assume that they were better to begin with than they are now. Now it's filler, but um, then you get into Raw. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. yeah. You, you gonna say it? <laughs> it was heavy. I. I I truly I I I'm gonna be upfront. I'm not gonna bullshit anybody. I went through a range of emotions on the beginning of Raw. But it started out with Becky. Yeah. I was irritated. <laughs> I was fucking annoyed. Not gonna bullshit. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Then she comes out with a fucking briefcase. I'm like, are you fucking serious what kind of fuckery is this and then she cuts into her promo and I'm like oh shit and my mindset was like oh this isn't good is this a work or is this a shoot and then she mentioned she has to go away for a while and she's in tears at at the time, I was like, oh my god, don't tell me it's like cancer or something. Holy fuck, this is heavy. 
oh my god i feel bad for being a piece of shit and being mad about this like don't tell me she fucking was diagnosed with something horrible and then she's interfucking erupted by this Asuka motherfucker. And I'm like, how the fuck are you guys going to do this? Interrupt something serious with a fucking, like, scripted interruption. I was like, this is fucking trash. And then when she dropped the bomb, I was not only relieved that she's not, like, fucking direly sick, but it's actually good news, and I'm like, oh, that's that's so nice, actually. I'm happy for her, and now I'm not annoyed anymore. And the way Oscar reacted, to be honest with you, I was like, oh, okay, she's a human being. She can put the script aside and just be so happy for someone that, you know, the whole celebration thing, I was like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, stop. You make yourself look like a fucking jackass. Mm-hmm. and you, you kind of look retarded not gonna lie but then when she hears the news the way she reacted like she's genuinely happy for her i was like oh that that's actually really nice i mean i'm someone that lost a child so that kind of shit really hits me heavy mm-hmm. and i get a little bit emotional about that kind of shit and i'm like that's really nice to see that someone cared that much that uh I was like, I I feel bad now for being agitated by Lynch coming out first. And, you know, I was like, oh, now I get it. And this is heavy. And I'm like, oh, this is actually really nice. So I had nothing negative to say, actually, when it was all said and done about that that whole promo. I was like, actually, that's really kind of sweet. And uh, from someone that lost a child, I mean, I'm always really happy for people that get to bring one into the world. Yeah, you know, yeah. with a clean slate and hope that nothing's wrong with them. Yeah, definitely. Um, Becky's pregnant. <laughs> right. And I mean, it's not mine. Just so everyone knows. <laughs> 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 I take no responsibility. I'm, I I know the ongoing joke with me and with some people. But but um, like, was it planned or was it just something that just happened? I mean, because Becky's like on top of the world right now, man. Right. I mean, and I joke with people because people, the ongoing joke with me is like, oh, you shake someone's hand, they're knocked up, you know? And I'm like, yeah. thanks, asshole. So now I joke with people like, it's not mine, I swear. Um, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I really don't know. Was it planned? Was it just kind of, you know, it happened? And it's hard to say. I mean, we don't really have that info. Um, but good question. Great question. Um, yeah. Like, did she plan this time off, or were they just something that just fucking happened? I, I, like, I truly feel, I get the vibe, like, it's just, it was not expected, and it was just, so this happened, and they were cool about it, and they were like, oh, that's great, actually, congrats. I mean, when you look at the reaction from people in the back, I don't think they knew until she announced it. I think it's like Reigns announcing his leukemia. No one even fucking closest to him knew till he said it and then they were like oh my god i don't know how to deal with this because they were kind of broken up over it they got emotional on live tv over it and it's like he kept it pretty close to the vest you know what i mean yeah um fuck um i guess i'm like you know, it's a good time for this to be going on with Becky because you know, I'm just now thinking about this is that they're doing all these fucking shows out of the fucking um, performance center. So, I mean, they're not touring the fucking country like they normally would right now unless it's something like fucking money in a bank at the headquarters or something. So, I mean, she could, she probably could just as well just being down there in Florida just while he's taping and shit. True, true. I mean, um, they're not going to be as separated as as a family normally would in this business, you know. Absolutely, no, I agree completely. That shit was I, fucking. Could you could you imagine like you know her sending that shit down while he was, you know, touring the fucking country like L.A., New York, fucking Louisiana, like, and she's got to sit down like. Yeah, I, don't know. I think he's going to take time off. I I truly do. Yeah. Yeah. That Mysterio shit, though. That was heavy. <laughs> yeah, that's why he gouging him and shit. That was dark. That was fucked up. 
Yeah, I like the way you came down to the ring, man. Just, just like fuck it, fuck it. All right, yeah, I got a match tonight. You okay? <laughs> you know what upset me? Dude was thrown off a fucking roof. How do you feel, Ray? I feel great. You're thrown <laughs> off a fucking roof. The last thing you should feel is great. <laughs> You're a veteran, man. You should know better. The I mean, fuck dude, that is, is that? that is, like you said, that is that is like screwing with little kids' minds. Like, <laughs> kids the aren't fully, de- fully developed and can't really understand. Like, how is this person here right now? <laughs> and he feels great. Because <laughs> I know if you throw me off a roof, like I'm either dead or in the hospital for the foreseeable. Right, future. throw me off a skyscraper. I feel great the next yeah. night. Like uh, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Oscar's champ, um, Otis, man. This is all I got, man. Is it fucking Otis, man? I don't, I don't fucking know like who he would go after. Uh, what you what that's that's weird like when would he cash it in how would he cash it in like that is where i'm stuck that's the last thing i wanted to touch on because i'm like i don't know like what do you like obviously he's not even in the bray wyatt realm to even fucking come close so obviously you got drew but I feel like here's where it gets fucked up for me. It's a wasted opportunity for everyone because in my view, he's going to try to cash in. Ziggler's going to fuck him. It becomes another failed attempt. Mm. He could have given it to Alistair. Yeah, so he thinks this was just a shock value uh, type of deal. I think, yeah. I, I do. Oh, fucking Otis got it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And the way it <laughs> happened was trash. The way yeah. it happened was just lazy, in my view. Yeah, yeah but it, it, my, my, my wife's like a casual fan. Dude, she's popping all over the place. Because, like, as soon as he stepped on the ladder, she's like, oh, there's no way he said he's going to win this match. There's no way he's got he's no too chance. Fat. Like, <laughs> he breaks yeah. the ladder. He can't climb that ladder. He had, like, a casual <laughs> The casual fan is like just popping off of that, right? I love that <laughs> shit. That, that, I mean, hey, you know, it, it shows they're doing something right. Even that's what I was saying. Yeah. Like, you know, like we grew up in this shit. This is like, you know, our uh, fucking uh, tent or whatever you want to call it. But absolutely, the people out the people outside, you know, they're freaking out. They're loving this shit, man. <laughs> people outside of the tent, like they're just fucking loving that shit, man. Uh, um, it's great man i mean it's good to see the casual fans getting a pop out of it yeah um, they are dude they, they fucking are that's crazy Cause, it keeps the business alive i yeah, think yeah, they, they, they get those coins while this shit is going on uh I, yeah i wanted to touch on AEW with you man what did you what do you think about that because I, I think they literally might, might have the best show going right now week to week i i, I have to agree 110 percent um I, I, the psychology alone, the psychology that they're coming up with. Look at Jericho. Okay, like people mock him a little bit and say like he got fat and whatever. But he was like, dude, that's because it makes for a better heel. Because if he goes to Japan, to New Japan, they like the fat American guys. Like that to them is like the unstoppable heel that um the bigger the better like the overweight fucking americans that are tall but like heavier and whatever in japan they're like how can like because they think of andre immediately andre was a huge deal in japan so they compare to like andre and they they feel like that the tall heavy guy from the u.s is like unstoppable to their best name that they have out there and Jericho has wrestled enough in, in Japan to know exactly how they view things. So he's like, dude, it makes you an, a mega heel to be a little bit pudgier and a little bit overweight, whatever. And, I mean, it works for his age as well. If yeah. the guy wanted to get in a great shape, he could. But with his age, it's just a lot easier to let it go a little bit. Yeah, of course he could if he wanted to. You hit on the head. Yeah. 
You know, of course, in like no time he could do that if he wanted to. Yeah, the guy's um, fucking goat, man. Yeah, um, man, that whole thing, like I'm telling you, it is the most. Uh, it is the most. I don't have to worry about. Like I might have to skip a match, maybe, but other than that, I like all the matches that they're putting together. I like that tournament that was going on. Um, this new guy that uh, Cody's gonna have to fight. I believe that he's gonna win that belt. Um, that TNT title. Like, I don't even know his name, but that dude's crushing a lot of shit right now. Um, with the red hair. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think everything they're doing is kind of nail on the head for the most part. I think they're fucking really making waves, man. Like, like um, the, the fucking other wrestlers being in a crowd. Like, I just like that shit. Yeah, I love that. That That's what I said WWE should have been doing from day one. They're in the building any fucking way. So why not? You know, and they're interfering, they're interfering in matches and shit. <laughs> right. Give a little ambiance at least, man. Give some yeah. fucking noise. Yeah. I, I feel like AEW, you hit the nail on the head. They're doing everything that WWE is not thinking of first. And yeah. I think that um, that that's why Vince feels threatened. Yeah, man. Yeah, and and um, that fucking um, Brody Lee, he, he's doing well there. Uh, fucking Luke Harper, he's doing well. I there. love it. I love it. All, all big thing was we, we stayed on Jericho the GOAT, man. Dude, you know how much I was enjoying him doing the commentary. I love him. He's fucking amazing. Did you hear him doing the commentary? On <laughs> he's the best commentator. He <laughs> says shit that you're like, you can't say that. And he's like. He said it though. It's like, oh shit! His big, his big stupid head. Oh, <laughs> his dumb head of his. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. It was, it was awesome. He man. says some shit where I'm like, holy hell, he didn't just say that. And he's like, he said it for sure. And I was like, oh, what was it that he said about someone recently? He called Kenny Omega a pumpkin, pumpkin head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he calls someone like a douchebag or some shit or, or worse. <laughs> and I was like, because they were oh, like, you okay. can't say that. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure he just fucking did. But it's pretty epic that yeah. like he called someone like a piece of shit or something. <laughs> I was like, you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what he fucking did. So it was pretty they, great. They, they hurry up and got him out of there and brought Jim Ross back. <laughs> but he was <laughs> I was enjoying that shit though. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, big stupid pumpkin head and talking about Omega call he's him a, like he's, a douche. He's bag. Respe- yeah, he's I respect him. He's one of the best wrestlers around with uh he said he's still a fucking pumpkin head. <laughs> <laughs> and that shows the psychology. He understands you never tear down a guy because you want him mm-hmm. to look like a million bucks when you beat him. So yeah. you credit him. And then call him a punk bitch, you know, <laughs> or pumpkin yeah. head fucking goof <laughs> or whatever the fuck you want to call him. But yeah. you make him sound like a million bucks first. So that way, yeah. if he beats you, there's no shame in losing. And if you beat mm-hmm. him, you beat someone. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, Shit, dude, I didn't have too much, but I had one more question. I had, I'm look, I'm taking over this chat and show. I have a question for you, though. Seriously. Hell yeah. Um, how much TV do you watch? I am not a TV guy, to be honest. I fucking don't have the time, honestly. Uh, I think the last time I watched TV was maybe like 2000. <laughs> <laughs> you watched the fucking Ja Rule video. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I made a point to not watch, but... <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I... I have a love hate relationship with Netflix. Yeah. Uh the sons of bitches. They fucking cancel everything that I fall in love with. Mm-hmm. And then they hate me with garbage. So uh it's been good to talk to you, but I'm gonna tell you what happened to me, man. Um I fucking on this quarantine and stuff, I just was sitting around <laughs> not doing anything and I fucking I fucking flipped on this show uh, called Rick and Morty, man. And I've been fucking just stuck to that shit, man. It's a good fucking show. Like it's fucking m- like fucking mosquitoes to some fucking shit. I don't know what the fuck it is, but... I, That's how I, I felt about oh, South Park. 
Oh my god, dude! I fucking love that Rick and Morty show. It's so crazy. It's a dope show. <laughs> not gonna lie. They don't take I, themselves seriously. Like nah. the fucking main, main character dies like every other episode. <laughs> I, I felt that way about South Park, like in the later years when it really yeah. got good. When people laid off them and they're like, okay, it's what they do. Yeah. No more lawsuits, no more bitching. That's why Family Guy, I think, gets away with what they get away with because South Park mm-hmm. kind of endured the lawsuits and the the naysayers and and finally it's like okay i get it it's part of their charm is what they do it, exactly and, and that's and that's why i like stop watching family guy you brought up Family guy but it seems like uh fucking metaphor joke got the metaphor joke got the metaphor joke got the metaphor joke. right right you're like, right give me something give me some, some give me some fucking continuity or something i don't fucking know man like Hey, like the last time I went to the store, like the last time I went to Florida, like the last time I went Right, to right. All the cutscenes and all that bullshit. Like, okay, okay, okay. I, I okay. crack up with South Park. I crack up at the shit they get away with. Yeah. I was just talking about Family Guy. South Park's a shit, dude. I mean, dude, I, I can always enjoy an episode of South Park. Right. It's I mean, well done. Family Guy, I get, awesome. I get people getting burned down on Family Guy. Dude, I'm fucking burnt down on Family Guy. Like I am the, too. The, the crescendo, and then it ends yeah. the same way. Oh, I just love my family. I'm just, I'm right. just want to be with my family, and ah, da, 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 da. I just did all this stupid shit, and we're we're a family again. Like I'm like, okay, all right, but you just told <laughs> 55 just fucking metaphor <laughs> jokes. Like I'm just sick of it, and and that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, I don't. They feel like they're just stuck. Do they have to do that for some reason? I don't know. I don't know. I, I agree it. completely. Yeah. It got old fast. And then you go yeah. back to South Park where you feel maybe like South Park's old. But you look at what they've done and all I, all that new I, time. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, check this out. Rick and Morty, like, they kill each other. They The main characters, they die all the fucking time and they reincarnate themselves with different versions from different dimensions. That's how they do that. Okay, how many times have, have Kenny died, right? <laughs> how many times has Kenny died? <laughs> Facts. So you see where they got that idea from. It had to be like some South Park influence there. Completely. Dude, fucking and Kenny's died like a hundred times. What cracked me up recently... Literally the other night, I was high as a kite. Not gonna lie, I smoke a lot of weed and I eat <laughs> edibles, so yeah. I I get pretty fuckered. Not gonna lie, and um, I I put on South Park, like best of on YouTube. Hmm. I am gonna burn in he- hell for this. <laughs> But I laughed so fucking hard when I heard Cartman say, shut your fucking mouth, you shifty Jew. And I just about pissed my pants. I'm like, that, you can't say that. I, I, I knew it was going to be something fucking Cartman said. Right? right? And it's like, and here they are getting away with it because yeah. we're we're done with all that battle of you can't say that on TV. Mm. Seth Park has won that battle time and time again. All the lawsuits, all this shit. Like, I think eventually people got it. We're like, oh, yeah. it's it's supposed to be funny. Yeah, and my and favorite and my favorite character on South Park is uh fucking um Stan, uh the dad. Yes, Randy. Fucking, He's the yeah, funniest motherfucker. He's the Randy. funniest motherfucker. <laughs> Randy Marsh is the funniest dude. Yeah, Stan's dad. Yeah, <laughs> I love Stan. Do you, I mean, I love do, you do you agree with me with how the show evolved? Um, I don't know your age, man, but I'm thirty yeah, fucking 32, seven. Thirty two. I'm, th- well, I'm thirty seven. So I grew up with The Simpsons. Yeah, and I remember when the show was all about Bart in the eighties. I remember the show actually when it was the Tracy Ullman shows like one minute long short 
and then it became its own show and when it started out it was all about bart and it was like yeah it's okay but as you grew up it became more about homer and when it became about homer it became better and funnier and like that's when it i think gained its longevity you can only ride bart's coattails for so long but adults don't find his bullshit funny it's homer's mm-hmm. stupidity that really made us all kind of laugh and it was like yeah homer is the subject here and yeah. when south park started i think kenny's deaths were kind of the go to and then you know of course cartman was kind of the the go to but when it became about fucking randy marsh and his <laughs> stupidity that's when it really got my attention where it's like oh this is gold <laughs> oh god you did you see do you remember the episodes when uh randy would uh dress up like lord <laughs> yes amazing <laughs> and i was just talking to my producer actually tonight my my son who passed his mom when we got together i love cooking so she was a huge South Park fan and she's like you need to see this because this is you in my <laughs> in my mind and I'm like oh for fuck's sakes and she hits me with the show where Randy's addicted to like the cooking channel so like his wife's going to bed and she's like I'm gonna go to bed you coming he's like no I'm gonna stay up and watch TV a little while and, oh Randy <laughs> don't be watching that no no channel I'm not gonna do that god you know and you're thinking porn and then he looks around no one's there she's off the bed puts on the cooking (laughs) channel and then he starts calling the cooking hotline he's like you gonna deglaze that pan and they're like well yeah he's like i deglazed the fuck out of that pan i put some red wine in quarter cup and <laughs> and he's treating it like it's filth. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's the most amazing thing ever. And I'm like, and you think that reminds you of me? <laughs> I know I, I know how to cook. I'm like, that's hilarious. Like that's a compliment yeah. in my yeah, view. Yeah. That's funny as fuck. I love it. Fucking Randy, man. It's like Randy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that dude, man. He's the yeah. best, man. Hey, I appreciate the fuck out of you being on, man. But I'm sure. You're oh, probably, no problem, man. I'm sure you're probably you, tired man. as fuck after doing yeah. your thing. No, but man, listen, dude, tetanus, man. Uh, man, the love you showed me, man. I got to show it back. Um, and I, I enjoyed doing this, man. Like I said, me and you do. We we get off on tangents, so I I, I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> it, it would was last gonna, forever. It, it, it was gonna be uh, it was gonna be easy work, so it wasn't hard for me, man. You know, I, I just I'm didn't want you to through. feel burnt out, man. I didn't want you to like feel obligated because I could reschedule at any time. I'm always yeah, happy no. to have you. So like if you weren't up to it, I was like, it's cool. We could just do it another no. time. It's no big I'm, deal. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm up to it for the Tatnus uh, uh, audience, man. Like, you guys, uh, I appreciate you. Guys y'all, are good man. to me, man. You guys Yo, are good to me. Appreciate um, you, brother. That, yeah, that's all I got, man, for real. I'll catch up with you, man, you know, and do this again. But I, I'm excited to hear this. It's, First time I've actually broken down a, um, a pay per view, and I was glad I was able to do it with a fellow uh, wrestling fan, you know. Oh, dude, it's been fun. I mean, like it was definitely an interesting one to break down and unpackage a little bit. Uh, fuck, it was interesting. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely love having you on, though. And I, I don't want to keep you too long. I respect your time, and I don't want to fucking waste it. So you know, I know you came off you know working your ass off and you know and i was like man i don't want to fucking make this guy feel obligated to do the show yeah yeah but the thing is i, I listened like i was at work i was listening to some of your episodes man i just i, I just got excited to, to come on man because I, I like the show man you was talking about the documentary and that's another that's another tangent we can get on like how is that <laughs> going <laughs> you know is everything going good with the documentary oh it's hard it's it's fucking brutal Thank God for people with patience of a saint to put up with me. <laughs> I I literally have to prepare like like prepare myself and you'll know when you see it. I've had a fucking dark life and to have to revisit 
that shit. Oh my God. I, I can only imagine when I was doing my homework for the show. I was thinking the same thing. Uh, uh, it, it's, um, it's, the thing is, I listened to the episodes, man. You were saying that you had um, um, a radio personality guy. You was going to be on this show like this week or something like that. And um, that uh, he was going to probably narrate it. You say he probably had to Yeah, yeah. It. I'm supposed to be on his show at some point. He wants me to be on his radio show. Yeah, man. And... I'm like, this show, I'm like the, the, the fucking amount of detail that this this guy um, is fucking putting into this document. Like, it, this shit's going to be fucking tight, man. Yeah, brother, I I love that. Um, this guy, I I don't know his commitment level. To now think about. That. Let me let me think about. Let me ask you this. Now you said you're gonna do the DVDs and shit like that. Look, dude, here we are, another tangent. <laughs> you know, gonna do the DVDs and and um, you're gonna get them out like that. Is there a way for you to uh have it maybe available for stream too, like for people just uh, to buy that is, it? There's there's a lot of talk um about that as well and even netflix um has kind of come up in the conversation so um now here's where it gets funny the the dude that initially i was like okay he's been on the radio he's got the voice for it and what have you um i i thought okay maybe he's experienced enough it won't sound like he's reading shit maybe he'll do it i reached out he was like i'm interested but you know i said we'll we'll talk when the time comes and he's like, all right fair enough and i don't really know how committed he is to the whole thing but uh, my producer my producer actually the first person that she mentioned for doing the job was you <laughs> and i was i was like i don't know if i want to put the guy on the spot and make him feel like you know he has to fucking do the shit but like i i don't hate the idea it's <laughs> like i thought of this other dude because um are you fucking serious man i shit you not and i was like i don't know if he'd want to do it so i don't want to fucking bother him with this shit okay okay this is this is the thing right here all right i would love to fucking do that shit okay that's the thing like this is so crazy, like our relationship. You see what it has become. Like you had your crazies and 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 um your crazy wonderful like you know twisted life, you know, and um and the fucking opportunities that have just come our way just by meeting you and knowing you and being fucking like stand up guy towards you and being um and, and just being real with you, you know, about myself and, and with being with each other, man. It's it's crazy about the stuff that 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 just would you like to narrate it like that is so crazy for you to ask me that because i'm like hell yeah i'll fucking do that shit and i'll fucking take it as, as seriously as i as seriously as i can and, and fucking um be a perfectionist about that shit man like shit it's brother so crazy um, man like i would it, like you said an honor dude it'd be an honor to do that but i but i, I just wanted to see what, you know you know what you because i know that you know DVDs is something, and it's 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 kind of expensive to make. I think like those DVDs like should go to special people and stuff like that. But I feel like you know streaming is where it's at. I'm just trying to see if there was an avenue that you probably could find a way to to stream your uh, DVD. That way I could tell somebody about it and they can fucking go download it immediately. I mean, of uh, course they have to pay, right? Of course, you know. There's, there's the, yeah, there's been a lot of talk. Um, I I initially the 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 fucking people behind it all had kind of approached me and said um i understand you want people to kind of screen the whole thing first and give you feedback so you should probably consider having them sign a contract stating uh that they're not permitted legally to share it with other people for free and this that and the third and um i was like okay we could do that or why not just invite them to a watch party with technology today where they can all watch it together at the same time give feedback as it's happening and i could actually watch this with them and get their input and uh they could say what they think about it and whatever comments can be used for um, kind of the feedback to promote it, whatever. 
but um yeah initially you were the go-to my producer my show's producer was like why not him if you need a fucking narrator and i was like man i don't know if you'd want to do, do that. that how would we do that would you just send me the script and yeah just- I, I basically like that was the plan with the original person but i i feel like his interest is kind of wavering and he's yeah, like you, need, you, need we'll someone, see. you don't want nobody half ass in your life dude. i've been fucked over too many times as of late with people that agreed to do the same thing that you've already done and and, and things and uh and, but you know what? it never it happened sucks. dude it sucks but you but you but you're able to see who's on your fucking team though right exactly and i was like live and learn you know um i just don't forget those that were stand up people fucking jealousy dude you know what I'm saying? Like I, I just I don't forget those that fucking kept their word. Mm-hmm. And, and the fucking part that sucks is people that I've known their whole life were the ones typically that failed. Those are the ones, man. And, you and then you know what? It's like some, it probably they don't even fucking believe in themselves that much, man. They don't. That's exactly it. Because I gave them an opportunity. They want to be like fucking rappers and shit. And I'm like, come on my show. I'll expose yeah. you to hundreds of thousands of fucking listeners. And they just ghost me after showing interest and it never happened. And I'm like, and you, you're the ones that tell me I tried everything to be successful. No motherfucker. You didn't because I gave you an opportunity that no one's going to hand to you on a silver platter and you ghosted me. Yeah. You know? So, Hey man, if you're interested in doing it, like no pressure whatsoever. No, (laughs) Pressure's gone. I will do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking stoked to do it. Like, dude, you don't know how fucking seriously I would take. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm a uh, Virgo, so we're mostly perfectionists, anyways. <laughs> I and, love um, it. And, and when we like people, like, uh, I'm honored, we're willing man. to go. We're willing to fucking go 110 percent for that person. Definitely so. honored. You're getting two copies signed, and you're not yeah. paying for. You're not paying for either one of them, by the way. Yeah, we're still um, swapping merch, dude. <laughs> oh, fucking for real. Yeah, for like, real. I gotta get, that back, like, I gotta get that back up and going, but I'm I gotta hook you. Shit now, yeah, so once the up. once the borders kind of open up a little bit, because they've yeah. been a little hectic and they're kind of like, eh, we're not, you know, shipping to certain countries and shit. So I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck, I gotta I gotta ease up and mm-hmm. wait till they open up a little bit, and then yeah, it's yours for sure. But, yeah. Um, um. Yeah, dude. Like, uh, fucking be just inboxing me. Just, just contact me about whatever you were gonna tell this fucking ass hat to do or whatever. Um, you start telling me that shit, dude, and um, I'll, I'll see what I need to record and send over. Fuck, to man. Shit like I that. love you, brother. I appreciate well, it. And, and we'll chip. We'll we'll chip that shit off. Uh, I appreciate the hat, fuck out of that. It, it's yeah, heavy. dude. You don't have to worry about that shit, dude. Like, I understand. Like I said, I, I respect you and. I appreciate I, I appreciate our fucking relationship, dude. It's it's something it's something for real, man. That I mean, come on, man. Like for me meeting you and for us just uh, interacting with each other to um, to the documentary, like it's just it's, it, it is it is it is it is worlds I haven't even visited, you know, and I would like to. So it's just cool. To, it's cool with me, man. It snowballed pretty I, quick. Huh? It snowballed pretty quick, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's why I'm a pre, but I'm a priest. I can, I, I still have enough time to stop and fucking appreciate it, though. You know, it, like it, wow, it, you hit the nail on the head. Chemistry, it's there, and yeah. it just it. And you don't fucking, have to force it. You don't have to force it. Nah, you, know? you never that's have that weak, to. That's that weak shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's I that appreciate shit. the fuck out of you, brother, and. Yeah. uh Thanks yeah, for coming did, on, man. No doubt, man. You let me know what I need to do, and you just you just message me, email me, man. Let me know what I need to do. I appreciate how reliable you are, especially. I got you. Uh, um, let's plug your shit before we go. Um, okay. Oh shit. I, I don't want to keep you, but I want to fucking plug your shit. Definitely, dude. Uh, I'm the host of <laughs> Miguel. Of the Just Chilling podcast uh, on on SoundCloud, dude. I hit it real hard uh, for this fucking um, COVID nineteen shit. But uh, my jobs have come back. Uh, I was doing like fucking two, three episodes a week, but my jobs come back and say, "Hey, get your ass back here and make some money." So I'm trying <laughs> to do. If I can bust one out a week now, I'm good. So you know, 
last week I didn't do anything because of Mother's Day and I got so many fucking mothers in my family. So I was just like giving them their shine and shit like that. Just like, you know what? Love the rest it. this week. But uh this weekend I'm supposed to be interviewing um uh Steven Scott. He's like a uh he's like a fucking um producer. He makes beats and shit, man. So I'm gonna be talking to him on the next episode about uh you know, you know, uh, what it, what it takes, you know, how do you get into, you know, making beats and shit and how it sounds hard as fuck, dude. You can give me fucking pro tools and I can make some shitty beats, but the shit he makes sounds good. So, you know, it's pretty stoked to interview him too. And my dude, here's the truth. His show is dope as fuck. So if you don't check it out, you can all go fuck yourselves. <laughs> That's coming from me. Two times. Two times. <laughs> Two times. <laughs> With a fucking cactus, you sons of bitches. Check out his podcast, fucking man. show. It's dope. And yeah. he honored me by having me on. And it was literally the best fucking guest appearance I've ever had. You said this, that shit, man. That is this so cat funny. is so professional. I was honored to be on this shit. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know what, man? It's like when you do stuff like that, like when you start a podcast, when you start doing that shit, and then like you, you get feedback like that. Like you, 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 you get enough of the negative shit. You get enough of the people not saying shit. Oh, you get real? enough of the people not supporting you. But you, when you get that one positive feedback, or you get that couple positive, I, I get positive feedback, but it's it's I get bad feedback too. So. When you get that good feedback, man, it's like, yeah, I knew I made the right decision <laughs> to, to do this really? show. Right? And, uh, and I told, and, and I think uh, Miss Radio is a, a girl I work with out of Chicago. And she just like, when are you doing another episode? With you? I was like, man, listen, dude, I got two jobs, and both of them called me back. So I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, but I haven't, I haven't, you know, quit or nothing like that on the show. And now she's like, you better now. You're a great fucking host. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> For Which real. parlays into this because you want me to narrate would narrate the the fucking doc and I'm and she tells me I'm a great host so I mean that could parlay into being a good narrator dude. Amazing, I mean in my view, and then there's me who I I maybe take for granted my position at times. I said this jokingly, of course, but when we did our first ever video show. My producer was like, hopefully, like, I I enjoyed it. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. I'm like, I hope so. But if you didn't, you can go fuck yourselves. <laughs> like, I just, like uh, instead of jokingly, of course. But it's like, I realized, like, I can get away with fucking murder. Like, I can say whatever the fuck I want. I've never had a negative review ever. And I've never had like a negative comment or mm-hmm. anybody like your show sucks and like punch me in the neck. <laughs> you know, like I've never yeah. had. And, and this that's, that's that's the shit I've been really like thinking about lately. Like these people be like these people will start like they'll do music, they'll do podcasts, and they'll do YouTube shows and shit. Like they'll be chasing fame so much. But do you know how fucking temporary like fame like? pinnacle fame is like you're only gonna have that shit for so long when even if you even if it does happen if you're not doing this shit because you want to or you're doing this shit because you love it or you're passionate about this shit then i just don't think you should be doing it man <laughs> let me tell you a little thing there too about fame it's a it's the drizzling shits <laughs> I, <laughs> like my producer and i went to bulk barn i don't know if y'all got it in the states but it's a fucking mm-hmm. bulk store mm-hmm. over here uh, it's across the street from me and I went in there to get some almonds because I'm like a health freak and you know I work out every fucking day for like four hours a day in the gym I eat you know pretty clean yeah and there's this really heavy dude and he puts his phone up and I thought he was filming me and I was like does this motherfucker think I'm stealing shit and I realized oh he's taking pictures he knows who I am Hmm. from mma and all that other bullshit and i'm like oh okay i get it and then i felt bad i talked about this on the show where i was like then i felt bad because it's like if he just came up to me and said hey what's up like you could have got a picture with me bro and like Hmm. i would have talked to you i wouldn't have been a dick i would have talked to you like a normal fucking person and just been like what's up you know let's talk let's talk about your favorite fighters like Obviously, you're taking pictures of me, so I must be fucking on your list or whatever. But let's talk about fighters that I fucking also love, and we could fanboy out together or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's just it's so fucking weird to me. 
yeah. that that like people make a big fuss about like I'm just a dude with a really cool job. Like I don't yeah. get the fucking whole making a fuss about me it's just weird to me and i don't like it <laughs> yeah see? and so many people go through it and you think about that and you you know, like you said uh how to, and how shit irritates you man it's, it's so many people on the ground level that are just willing to give up anything for that type of experience with, right with, and, with a rando and they have no <laughs> idea they have no idea what they're asking for you know because exactly. I mean? when you get it I, I don't. You. I, I don't. I don't chase fame, man. I I, I chase the art, man. I, cause cause you want to be. You know what? I feel like that if you're doing that shit and you're heading the right direction, that moment's gonna happen, and your ass better be ready for when you're put on the spot. You know. Amen. I wasn't yes. ready. <laughs> <laughs> I had no fun. I'm still not ready, and it's well, been I mean, like. I mean, I mean, come on, dude. Like hindsight's twenty two. I'm just I'm just looking at at all these horror stories. You know, uh, you know you know, from the celebrities or, or, you know, people and stuff like that, like they're just chasing for the, like uh, these, these once a, once a year rappers that are just big and then next year they're nothing. Then it's another one. Then they're nothing. Then it's right. another one. And there's nothing. Like, I'm on four years. They, you don't know what they gave up, you know, to, to get Exactly. There. I'm on, I'm on year four now and I still not used to it. And I, I hate it. I don't like <laughs> any of it. I I feel weird about it. I I'm like I'm just a dude. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. You 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 Mario like Mike Tyson mentioned that when, like when he was in the height of his shit, man. He didn't like nobody really fucking with him and shit like that. I think uh he said some shit on his uh podcast about uh he he was he was in a mall with Dennis Rodman or some shit like that, and Dennis Rodman <laughs> had a guy had a guy with him. And the guy was like just giving him real fucked up vibes, but he was like a fan, but he didn't know how to approach Mike. And he was he was saying some weird shit to Mike, and Mike just like, you know, hey, if you come back and distort this motherfucker again, another day I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's kind of how it is. Like, don't don't come at me all weird and like just treat me like a person, and I will do the same. Like, I'm just a dude with a cool job. That's it. Like, don't don't get all weird. And, you know, I don't like that worshipy type bullshit because it's like, who the fuck am I, dude? I'm just another dude that did some shit. Like, yeah. you could too. It's it's fine. I promise. You could do it too. And then you'd be like, why am I making such a big fuss about this idiot? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> that's how I feel. And here they are making a documentary about me. They're probably going to retract the offer now. But... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I might have no. put you out of work, but <laughs> they, they they know what they want. They know what they're getting. <laughs> I yeah, appreciate yeah. the fuck out of you, brother. Uh, no doubt, man. No doubt. Man. I, no. I love you to for death, you, man. I love, love you too, to man. death. I appreciate you, it. I appreciate the fuck out of it. Stay Thank in you touch, so much. dude. You know that. Hell yeah, man. And thanks for coming on. I don't want to no take doubt. any more of your I wanna, time. I, I want to hear. I want to hear this when it's done, man. Let me know, man. Oh, for sure. I'll be I at advertise. work. I'll just turn this shit on and listen to it again. I advertise like a motherfucker. So, I, and I don't cut much. If I go over an hour, I'm like, fuck it. Then it's over an hour. Listen yeah. to it or don't. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got so. that dope producer, dude. Yeah. You're right. You're going to get it hooked you know? up. That's right. Yeah, that sounds good. Shit. I was listening to you today, man. That's what I said. I kind of caught up on some episodes. Man. Just like, ah, I appreciate that, brother. I, I try shit, to, I always make it a point to check out your shit too, and I'm like, yeah, this is yeah, golden. yeah. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Like I said, I'm not always. chasing fame or nothing. I just want to put out no. a good show. You're just genuine. Show. I love that. I I always love that about your show. You're just genuine. Like you were never talking about shit that's like trending just to mm -hmm. try to get fucking you know recognition. I could, I could do I could do 50 episodes about Drake and everybody would fucking love it. Right, you know, or this Drake COVID today, bullshit. I heard Drake's got a new song. Did you hear the new Drake clip? Like, oh. I hate that. I I purposely avoid talking about anything that is <laughs> trending, like this COVID bullshit and all this other crap. I'm like, I'm not even gonna touch it, just because. Mm -hmm. The only thing I came close to was talking about all y'all that are considered like essential workers and whatever. It's been a minute yeah. since I've had to work for someone else. But I appreciate yeah. y'all for doing what you do. Oh yeah, and you know it, it's fucking you don't get enough credit. And I mm -hmm. I just want to say thanks to all y'all. 
Uh, every fucking one of you. I don't care what your career is, man. That's all right. That's right. You know kids, gotta be, kids gotta be fed, man. That's kids right. And if you're risking <laughs> your asses to do that shit, then I appreciate y'all. So yeah. that that's as far as I went with talking about that whole situation because it's trending and it's like everyone wants to talk about it. And I'm like, people are sick of it. If you want mm-hmm. entertainment, come listen to my show. If you want to hear about <laughs> that fucking virus bullshit, go watch CNN. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Put a, put a fucking place to go and see that shit. At. Right. So, like, <laughs> not, you know, my show's not the place. We we don't touch on that. But, yeah. um, man, I've kept you up all fucking night, and I feel like shit. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to get in here with the wife, man. I don't know, man. She's, I'm going to see, uh, you know, I'm going to go cuddle up with the wife. <laughs> Amen. I, I appreciate you, brother. All Thank right, just hit me up, man. I, uh, let me know, man. You know, I, I love the narrators. Let me Will know. do. That's dope. Thank you. All right, y'all. We went well past our time. We went way into some tangents, and it was a definite wrestling show because there was a lot of false finishes there. My bad. But always a pleasure talking to my dude. Uh, just a great dude. Uh, great show. We just mesh. So thanks for checking us out. And sorry it was so damn long, but sometimes this is what happens, man. I will not speak to smallness, a destruction of the fear in us. I have yet to know what I should tell He gave me a book on art forgery. I found myself drawn to these old masters. How did these artists take paint from a palette, arrange it on a canvas? I began to unlock the secrets. I was a storehouse of knowledge of how to create an illusion, present it to a experienced expert, manipulate his mind, and convince him and bring him to the inevitable conclusion that the painting is genuine. We flooded the market with my paintings, and I couldn't believe what I did. I couldn't believe it. Then the dominoes started falling, and eventually the FBI were led to my door. They uncovered a mountain of evidence against me. But they never actually got you. At this point, you've sold a lot. You've got like a million dollars in cash. You <laughs> sold one painting for 717000 Why did it go away? Why did you never get indicted? And how are we having this conversation? (laughs) I guess that's the greatest story of all. To hear how Ken Perenni made millions in art forgery, dodged the mafia and the FBI, subscribe to The Jordan Harbinger Show and check out episode 282 in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening now.